How's it going guys and welcome to the first part of my ultimate Amara guide. In this part we're going to be covering Amara's damage formulas aka the numbers behind the scenes that make the numbers that you end up seeing after you blow an enemy's face off. From her gun damage to melee to bonus elements this video will showcase and break down all of her main formulas. This is the most basic and core fundamental aspect to understanding Amara and how to build her properly yourself so this is definitely a video that you may want to reference back to often often, especially as this series continues onward. But with that out of the way, let's make sense of this mess of a character. So getting straight into things here, let's start with her gun damage formula, which looks like this. And of course, this is very confusing to look at for someone who doesn't actually know entirely what they are looking at. But before we get into the details, let's talk about exactly what a damage formula is and that it can be simplified down to pretty much just this. Your base gun damage times your gun damage bonuses times V1 damage times V2 damage times splash damage bonuses, times elemental bonuses, times crit bonuses, with a couple miscellaneous modifiers thrown in between. Which, obviously, each of these sections correlates to their own type of bonus, and all of these different bonuses are multiplicative with each other, meaning that each one multiplies by the next. First off is the base damage, which is just the raw gun damage from the actual item card itself. That then gets multiplied by our specific weapon slash gun damage bonuses, and then V1, which is just damage bonuses that aren't gun damage but are multiplicative duplicative with gun damage, V2, which is very similar to V1 in that it's just another damage bonus, splash damage, of course this only applies to weapons that deal splash damage, but any splash damage bonuses will end up here, elemental, similarly to splash damage, this only applies if the gun you're shooting is elemental, and crit, which can apply on pretty much any gun as long as you crit with it. Now we're going to bring up that big scary formula again and dive a little bit deeper into what's going on here. Now as I talked about previously, each separate section of the formula is multiplicative with each other. Within each of these sections is additive bonuses. So when we take a look into our gun damage section, we can see that we have 1 plus Wrath plus Dread plus Samsara, etc. These are all gun damage bonuses and they don't multiply each other, they add with each other. So for example, if we take Wrath and Dread, Wrath giving you up to 40% bonus gun damage and Dread giving you 30% bonus gun damage, which of course will add together to be 70% bonus gun damage. So when you look at this formula, you want to look at each of these colors as everything within it is adding with each other, and every separate color is multiplying with each other. Now that is how a damage formula works, but what does this actually mean and what can we gain from looking at this when we're thinking about our builds? Well first it's worth noting that Amara's damage formula is definitely and by far the best damage formula in Borderlands 3, if not the franchise as a whole. No other character has as balanced of a damage formula as Amara does. She has so much easy access to so many different damage types that the amount of multiplication that will happen just in your average Amara build is fucking wild. With the other Vault Hunters, they tend to have some sort of bloat within one section of their formula and very minimal boosts from within their skill trees to another. Amara's skills are distributed beautifully and evenly all throughout her formula, meaning that there is a lot of optimization that you can do for your build within her skill trees alone. What that also means though is that Amara is perhaps one of the most important Vault Hunters to understand the idea of diminishing returns on. We can illustrate this very easily with gun damage as a lot of her class mods and anointments provide her with a shit ton of gun damage. For example, let's take a Death's Blessing, which is giving you 150% gun damage, and the Phase Cast Weapon Damage Anointment, which is another 250%, which provides a total of 400% gun damage. And now let's say you have the option of using either a Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge or an Icebreaker Victory Rush. The Pearl provides 15% as a multiplicative boost from its stacking, before finally giving you another 90% bonus gun damage. So we do 1 plus 4 plus 0.9 for our weapon damage section, we then multiply that by 1 plus 0.15 to get a total of 6.79 as our multiplier to our base card damage. If we go for the Icebreaker Victory Rush, we instead end up with 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 0.18 times 1 plus 0.5 for an 8.85 multiplier to our base damage, which is definitely a decent bit higher. This is why beyond a certain point, stacking just gun damage, which I believe is 
is the specific pitfall a lot of Amara players end up falling into, isn't ideal when you have other options. However, this isn't a weapon damage specific thing, this goes for literally any source of bonus damage. You want multipliers, you want to get a big number somewhere and you want to multiply it by more numbers, which again brings us back to why Amara's damage formula is so good because she has tons of different damage types just within her skill trees alone. Understanding this formula and what skills slot where is absolutely necessary to being proficient with Amara so that you can get the most damage out of her possible. The general rule is that you do want to focus on something to get at least one big number as your starting point. Then you want to diversify your multipliers. You want to get as many multipliers as you can and you want to boost those up as much as you can as well. Now coming to bonus elements, the formula is almost exactly the same with the exception of it doesn't get splash damage bonuses. And while the bonus element does stale off of everything else other than that, the same as your main damage, it does stale independently from your main damage and other bonus elements. The only major difference is that instead of using the entire card damage, it takes that card damage and only uses a percentage of it as listed on your source of that bonus element. This is also the same way that forceful expression works, however infusion is a little bit different. Infusion happens after the damage calculation, meaning that both halves get boosted by gun damage and other various bonuses. The infusion damage, however, will not gain elemental bonuses granted to the main element. For example, if you have shock as your main damage element with a shock damage boost, it will not boost the damage of the cryo infusion damage, despite the cryo damage being 40% of your main element damage. Infusion elements will gain their own elemental damage type bonuses though. So the way that you can think about infusion is that it happens after the calculation where your damage is split into two different elements. Each element, however, stales independently with their distinct elemental type bonuses. It is also worth noting though that if you use the same element on both your gun and your attuned element, you will see absolutely no change. There's no double dip shenanigans going on with elemental damage bonuses or anything, it just acts as though it would without infusion. Now to clear up a misconception that I do still sort of see sometimes, forceful expression along with other elemental damage bonuses because they work the same, do not get less damage when using it alongside infusion. They both do as much damage with or without each other and add up perfectly to match their proper numbers when both are used together. Before moving into the melee section, I want to quickly clarify that I will be using the terms real melee damage to refer to actual melee hits from Amara herself, and I will use weapon melee damage to refer to things that are like the Blade Fury or the Face Puncher or just any melee damage that isn't from an actual melee hit. So getting into it, this is our real melee damage formula. We have our base melee damage times our melee damage bonuses times our elemental damage bonuses with a couple different things kind of mixed in as our miscellaneous modifiers. Breaking this down to start, we have our base melee damage, which has a calculation of its own, which is 18 times 1.09 to the exponent of your level, which is 8,912.1 at level 72. At max mayhem, you also get a 16 times multiplier for your mayhem staling onto this base damage. This is also where part of the blitz damage comes into play. Blitz, a Mars green tree capstone still, is split into two different damages. There's the blitz inactive, which is just a straight up 100% bonus melee damage boost, which is always being provided to her. And there's Blitz Active, which is the actual damage bonus that you get when the Blitz Melee Override actually activates. The formula to calculate Blitz Active is 0.75 plus 0.015 times your level, which gives you a 1.83 times multiplier at max level. On active Blitz Strikes, it also will convert your melee into your action still element. However, this will not affect weapon melee damage, only real melee damage, which is also similar to Illuminated Fist, which will also not convert your weapon melee damage. Another thing to note with this is that Illuminated Fist switches element right after selecting it in the still menu, while Blitz only switches element after using an action still with the new element. If these stills are on different elements, Blitz will override Illuminated Fist on Blitz Strikes, but Illuminated Fist takes over on cooldown. This is a goofy interaction that doesn't really have any sort of real use, but it's good to know. Some other things that are also good to keep in mind though, Burn Both Ends is for some reason elemental damage, but it does also still apply to non-elemental attacks. So it slots into the elemental section of your formula, but it doesn't only apply when you're dealing elemental damage. The special effect of the butt plug is that when hitting an enemy from behind, you get a 100% bonus damage increase. This is a multiplicative damage boost within its own category, which will just straight up double your entire damage formula pretty much. The actual 110% melee damage from the blade on the butt plug seems really weird, and I had a lot of weird inconsistencies with it, and I was 
unable to narrow down exactly what this goofiness was. However, it was consistently higher than what it was supposed to be by about 16 to 20 percent. Real melee damage and weapon melee damage cannot score critical hits, but bonus elemental damage from shields and grenade anointments and white elephant sticky bombs are able to. Guns and shields are both able to have a plus 100 percent melee damage on action still end or a plus 200 percent melee damage after face slam anointment. If two of the same of these are used at the same time, they do not stack, but if one of each is used, they do stack for a total of 300% melee damage. Enemies which are fully frozen take three times melee damage from all sources, meaning both real and weapon melee damage. And finally, if damage is converted to elemental from Blitz or Illuminated Fist, you will receive healing from Sustainment. However, the healing is only from the first section, being the base times Blitz active times 16. So now moving specifically into talking about the Face Puncher, here is your damage formula for your weapon melee damage. This is the only formula that is relevant to the face puncher. You get the base card damage of the face puncher times your melee damage bonuses times your gun damage bonuses and then a couple other miscellaneous modifiers. Now there's a lot of things that the face puncher doesn't get. That being the blitz active multiplier, however it will receive the base 100% bonus damage, personal space, forceful expression, although despite that it does get infusion, gun damage guardian rank boost, shotgun damage bonuses from class mods and artifacts, and is not converted to any element by blitz or illuminated fist. And then to the blade fury, it gets both of our formulas, both gun damage and melee damage. As this weapon actually splits its damage into two even visually, with the top number being gun damage and the lower number being melee damage. Of course, here's our simplified gun damage formula, base damage times gun damage times v1 times v2 times splash times crit with a couple of miscellaneous modifiers thrown in between. And yeah, the splash damage is intentional as the Blade Fury actually does deal splash damage and gain bonuses from splash damage boost, it just has zero splash damage radius. The Blade Fury is always non-elemental, which is why there's no elemental section to this. However, specifically this gun damage section can get a bonus element applied to it, which is the same formula. Again, here's the simplified version, percent bonus element times gun damage times v1 times v2 times elemental times crit, and again, those miscellaneous modifiers. And now to our melee damage formula, again, this will just be the simplified version. It is almost identical to the face puncher's formula, being base damage times melee times gun damage. However, the base melee damage is actually half of the base card damage. And for the final thing I'd like to talk about in this video, I'm just going to go over Groundbreaker very quickly, as this is just very important to any sort of melee Amara build. Well, in-game it says 25%, it is only 10% of the damage that you've dealt in the last five seconds. Groundbreaker damage is a separate source of damage from your main damage, and you will actually see another non-elemental damage number when using Groundbreaker. Groundbreaker is only damage that is dealt before the melee hit. However, this isn't true for the Blade Fury, as you will always get bonus damage from Groundbreaker on the melee portion of the hit. But that's gonna about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something. If you have any sort of questions, leave them in the comments, and I will be sure to answer them as best I can. And also, while you're down there, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing to catch all the future parts of the series. Series. Down in the description is also a link to my Twitch channel where I'll be live right after this video goes up, and below that is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out and ask me questions even more directly. But with that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.